Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Vampire the Masquerade, Twin Saves by Night. Negligence is our first story arc for our campaign that takes place in 2010 in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota. Follow Ophelia, a Toreador played by Alex, Jonathan, a Venture played by David, Katow, a Gangrel played by Quinn, and William, a Venture played by Slavic, as they are pulled out of their seclusion and tasked to investigate a series of gruesome murders. If you'd like to contact us, you can follow us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. All right, welcome. We left off on the evening of November 9th, which is a Monday. We, you guys were talking in a group conversation. We could do, either do one or two things. We could continue playing that night, or we can start fresh. Well, it's up to you guys. What do you want to do? I think we should uh, stick with the first night and just like continue our planning, so that way we have like a full night to you know execute it. Sure, yeah. What time was it? I can't remember. It was around 10 in the evening. Okay, so it's still quite early. Yeah. All right, let's just get some things out in the air here. All right, let let's re-identify what our, our our mission objectives are for for this for this mission that we're on. Kai Tao, what 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 is our mission here? Uh, to basically put a stop to these things before everyone comes through before media comes through with knowledge and says, "Hey, all these people are doomed to rate of blood, huh?" And basically, make everything more complicated for all of us. And Ophelia, what is our mission? We are trying to solve these murders without drawing attention to kindred society, if required. Okay, as I understand it, the Cinesol wants us to make this disappear, and he doesn't care how. Okay. Crime exists in the city. We didn't bring it here, and we're not going to make it leave. There's drug dealers, there's addicts, there's murders, ev- murders every day that happens. And the Cinesol doesn't give a shit about any of that, and neither do I. So, the goal is to, to make this go away and not bring any major attention to the city. So if someone dies, it don't matter. As long as it doesn't become headline news. If an addict ODs, it doesn't matter because it's not going to make headline news. If a drug dealer fell off a pier right now, no one would give a shit. So where are you going with this? What I'm going with this is that when, when you make an omelet, you have to break some eggs. So we, we need to be on the same page here as far as how how we're going to handle this and how far are we going to go to handle this. But we've got a chance to do a bit of good here and maybe, you know, rather than just make this disappear, we could actually help help some people at the same time. Where, where, are we all on the phone here? Yeah, or, you're on the phone. Yeah. All right. O- Ophelia, I, I, I know you're not with me right now. I, I'm looking out my car window at the field from which I grow my fucks, and alas, it lays barren. Right. I think we should be careful being so brutal. I mean, I don't mind if we break a few eggs, but, you know, in the end, violence always brings attention. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going out of my way to hurt anybody. I, 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 could care, I couldn't possibly care less about any of this, but I don't want to be involved in any of this. I don't. I don't like any of you. I don't want to know any of you. I don't want to be your friends. I don't want to be your confidants. I don't want to be the shoulder from which you cry on. I want to get this over. As, I want to get this over as quickly as we possibly can, so that we can all move on to our very important unlives. I do have to mention, though, that I feel that we have very different ideas of what efficiency means. You seem to think efficiency is getting the job done as quickly as possible, regardless of what the consequences are. 
I seem to be of the idea that doing something effectively and efficiently means that you get it done with the least amount of trouble caused as possible. I see I those are two different ideas. I, I, and I can agree with some of that. I can, I can, I can definitely agree with some of that. I, I don't want to go through any additional work that we have to. I want to, I want to finish this with this leak, as least work as possible. You're not in the least bit interested in why the, you know, supposed cult is killing these people or what ties it could have to the kindred in the city at all. You just want it to go away so you can go back to, I don't know, watching Iraq war footage on your TV or reading up stock exchange reports while you drink prostitutes' blood in your cheap apartment. I don't have a cheap apartment. Well, all the rest is true, apparently. So here's how I see what we need to go forward. Our, in, unless anybody else has anything to interject, <clears throat> uh, Brian Riker is where it. we're going next. Uh, I, 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 I defer to my, my field of fucks. Here's how I would see that we move forward with this. We need more information on him before we confront him. Uh, I want to confront him in the guise of uh, FBI agents to pressure him for information. Because either he's involved or he's not involved. And the quickest way to do that is to to slap in his face what we know of his involvement and see how he reacts. Either he's innocent and we can pressure him with information through exposure of his connections to both of these murders. And maybe he has very little information, but it is a definite way to, to force him into giving us information. And if we kind of confront him with this and he is involved, I think it should be quickly apparent when, when he gets slapped with this information via how he reacts to the situation. And, and these, these are just interrogation methods to use. It doesn't require physical force. I'm not looking to injure this guy. I'm not looking to hurt him. I'm not looking to throw his body in the, in one of the three rivers, which go through, through the two cities, which I'm very familiar with. <laughs> I can call upon some of my contacts with the different accounting departments, try to dig something off from the corporate world. That, that would be that. perfect. If you could dig into, um, the, the, the two companies. That he's that we know that they've been a wait a minute no sorry one company the one company that he's yeah. associated with is analytical medical solutions I want to know who the board members are I want to know how much connection he has to them I want to know if he has family I want to know if he has debts um, you know the, these these are all going to be uh, give us pieces of a much larger puzzle of who Brandon Riker Hey, I remembered his name for the rest of you. And, you know, give us give us an ideal going in to this what what we're dealing with so that we don't we don't get ourselves caught in a trap. I um, have a suggestion that might not involve people at all. Okay. Because as you seem so fond of making jokes about, Gangrel do sort of have a connection with animals. If someone could get say like a cat into into this guy's apartment. <laughs> I could... I could <laughs> a cat! I don't... Okay, it doesn't have to be a cat, okay? I don't know. Is any animal less inherently funny to you? But any... I could... I. The thing we can figure out from there is simply... Well, so the, you're, the, you're, like, you're, select, you're, you're suggesting that we slip some pussy into his apartment? I know. I should have gone with the dog thing instead. <laughs> <laughs> a dog, cat... A, a, a rat would be more appropriate if yeah. it... Maybe but, a cockroach. But I thought since it was a higher class apartment, a rat would be at the same time more noticeable. So okay. my thought was that maybe have some like Ophelia, like have like a small, have like an animal with them, like carry them into the apartment somehow, like let it loose, and then like we can see does you know does the apartment smell like blood? Does it does a cat you know, shy away from Brandon? Does it, is something wrong with the place? Because right. If you want to try and slip some animal into his apartment, that's on you. What you could really do for us, if you could, for the next two nights or so, tail his apartment. Just sit out, observe from a distance, see if he leaves and goes anywhere, follow him from a distance, don't engage, and let's see where he goes. If he doesn't go anywhere, great. If he does go anywhere, it would be a good idea of what circles this guy is moving in. There is that idea. 
you know, and, and it doesn't require you getting a, a firearm pulled on you or, or your delicate sensibilities of handing drugs to somebody that uses drugs. All right, cool. And what about you, Ophelia? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this kind of thing, you know, uh, don't normally, uh, interrogate or follow or stalk people. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna oh, defer do at this point. <laughs> I'll defer, but, uh, you know, don't, I'm not, I'm not chucking anyone in the river. I'm not running anyone over with my car, and I'm certainly not taking or selling drugs to minors. Was she a minor? I don't even know. I defer to my field of fucks. No, she wasn't a minor, but she definitely was a junkie. I'll say that, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't really care. Junk, junkies are going to do what junkies do, and if I have something that I can give to them to get information for me, because they're an asset. In the end, we have assets, and I'm going to some some assets need to be pushed. Right. I'm just putting my phone on the table on speakerphone and kind of half listening now because I'm steaming. Oh, okay, yeah. Steam. The okay. phone's on speaker while I go to my wardrobe and deliberately dress as down and drab as I possibly can. All right. Let me let me talk about what I bring to this table. I, I bring an objective view from a government that, that does this kind of covert clandestine missions every single day without the knowledge of the American people. All right. I, I served in Vietnam. I operated with the CIA and Operation Air America. I continued on as uh, an analyst for the CIA, and I've watched this. And the government has acceptable losses. They they view individuals as assets, and each asset has their own triggers. Not everybody reacts the same to to certain stimuli, and we need to look at people, assets in that way, and see what we have to do in order to get what we need out of them. And that's the only way we're going to get this job done. Now, if we fail to do this in a, in a speedy manner to, to, to cool your consciences, more people are going to die brutally. I don't care, but I know you care. So, so let me do what I do best and help you save lives, and I will go out of my way to be more conscious about the collateral damage that we may or may not cause. But we all need to understand that when, when we are dealing with an individual, an asset, there can, can only be one mind in this, one action. Because if we start tearing apart at one another in front of an asset, we lost already. The, whatever information that we could have possibly gathered from that that individual will be corrupted and we won't be able to use it so when when we make a, a decision to act on somebody it we all have to be one unified force so outside of being in front of individuals we can sit here and discuss things and make decisions but when we're in the field one force. There, there cannot be any, any divergent from our mission. It's just like every dysfunctional family ever. We put on their happy faces for the public and just argue with everyone behind Joe closed doors. Okay. Thank you for bringing that family life perspective into this. Uh, yeah. Um, I've just gotten dressed. Uh, I'll pick up the phone and say, okay, well, what are we doing now then? Okay. Here, we- here, here's what I would appreciate if we could all get on one page. William, uh, uh, attack, attack the information. I, we need you to go oh, in yeah. and, and find out everything you can about this company, Brandon, and his personal life. Kai Tao, if, if you can, from a distance, track this guy. You, you're, you're going to keep your, your eyes on him. If he leaves, he goes somewhere, you follow him. If you can't follow him into the place that he goes to, completely fine. Hold back. If he doesn't come out or if he goes somewhere else, we need to know. So you're, you're going to be the bloodhound for uh, lack of a better term. You're going to tell this individual and get us an idea of what his actions are on a day to day basis. That's so from we, night to night. From night to night. Right. Ophelia, how are you mm-hmm. about research? Can you, can you handle research? Sure. Yeah, I can handle research. Okay. You own a, a, a 
a, a restaurant establishment, so you have I access do. to people. If you could track down a, any leads on this pamphlet and this group, and so this right whole, up my alley. and this whole Lilith connection or potential co- connection, that would be fantastic. I actually Got have it. a meeting with a Tremere with. I will be asked. Uh, just be careful about what you uh, say to other members of our society. That this is our task, and they don't. We don't need them to know what we know about this. We're just going to make it disappear. So be careful about what you give away with what we're doing, because we don't know if any of them may be involved. Maybe you'll, maybe Ophelia can go with you tomorrow, William. Oh, sure, I like meeting. I like meeting other members of our community. Okay, and I'm going to be getting us some uh, additional um, assets. All right, so you guys are going to start on that today? I hang out the phone. <laughs> All right, the phone hangs up. Uh, let's go to you first, William, Mr. Strother. You want to start doing that research, brother? Yeah, I'll be calling around, you know, asking if they know something about this company who they're working with, board of let's, directors. Yeah, let's do a, a role in intelligence and finance difficulty uh, seven how many how many uh did you get one two three four so you got three successes so let's do some talking here let's ask me some questions and i will tell you if you get the answers and then i'll give you some information that you may uh may not be asking about first you know we wanted to know who's on the board of directors so the people on the board of well there's actually three people on the board of directors the three people on the board of directors are Brandon Riker, Rebecca Powers, and Heather Lindsay. That's L I N D S A Y. Uh, okay. Uh, now something about Riker's personality and his habits. Uh, uh you, from what you were able to tell by talking to people that you know and everything. And by the way, we're going to say that you're spending the rest of your evening doing this, William. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you're, you're able to find out that he's kind of like a socialite. You know, he, he's kind of known for being, uh, uh, dating around on the scene, kind of enjoying life, but being a brilliant business minded individual. So he's about 28, 29 years old. Uh, he was actually on the Minneapolis's or the Twin Cities 10 under 30 best businessmen and women of the decade. Uh, so that, that was actually pretty cool there too. Uh, what was his big break? What did he? Sort of appear on the scene. His his big break was actually getting into analytical medical solutions, okay. where they actually became went from being a private to a publicly owned company. He's the one who helped with with, with that transaction. That's transition, excuse me. That's where he kind of got his break. And by the way, you can ask questions about the company too if you want. Yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, how old is the company? The company was created in 1948. Okay, uh, do they have, or how well are they connected in the medical, you know, field? They got a good reputation. And do a lot of people use them, like? Oh yeah, the hospitals in the area use them, hospitals, mainly in the Midwest and Northern United States. Any controversies? Nope, no controversies, pretty silent. Okay, so um, when was it uh, made public? It was made public uh, in 2002, and I want you, if you can't, when you're done asking questions, I got, I, I'm gonna have you do another roll. So if you have any more, ask them away, or you still don't. Okay. What we'll do is I'll have you do the roll, and if you think of any questions, you can ask. Right. Uh, how about the stock? I was looking at the stock. You're looking at the stock. The stock's doing very well. Basically, from your analysis, from everything, it's a healthy company. Nothing sticks out that. Anything's bad going on, but I need you to roll a wits plus finance difficulty eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he botched. Get he the totally fucking... botched. Oh totally my botched. god, dude. Uh, you found Look, nothing, that's okay? Oh, yeah. You found nothing. We'll say that for now, okay? Katow. So, what are you doing, good sir? So, what time is it? It's uh, about 10.30. So, so, I guess... I can sort of like drive by the uh, Brandon Riker's, uh, the whatever the building they live in. Yeah, the apartment towers. But you come up to uh, it's pretty much it's about thirteen stories. 
rather large building has front glass windows that are about 10 feet high and go about, uh, I want to say 30 feet across. There's a drive up area where there's chauffeur, chauffeur parking, you know, a guy who comes and opens the door for you, wears like a darker coat with white gloves and everything like that. Definitely high end side of Minneapolis that you're in right now is kind of by Ellsworth Towers where you heard uh, it's about half a mile, mile away from Ellsworth Towers, has a good view of the Mississippi River that uh, behind the towers itself. Uh, and you're in your car there. It's And again, it's still to remind you a brisk, cold night, but it's not snowing. But a lot of the snow hasn't been scraped off of sidewalk. It's kind of at that compressed, you know, solid mm-hmm. state and everything. So you can see the, the chauffeur guy. They also have, like I said, thicker black jackets on with white gloves. You see the breath coming out. They're just kind of standing around there. You see warm white coming from within. Uh, there's a gray carpet. You can kind of make out like a little desk and maybe some of the silver metallic colors of three elevators on the far wall in. So, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, well, I can't really do too much tonight because I don't really think I have a picture. Do I know what the Brandon Riker looks like? Yeah, you, so you have an idea of a picture of what he looks like where basically he has, like I said to, uh, to Slavic, he's late twenties, uh, has neatly, uh, cut manicured hair, black hair, has kind of a, Charming smile, Caucasian guy, uh, no facial hair, blue eyes. Yeah, when you think of a success, successful socialite kind of guy, that's like the atypical kind of person you would think. Uh, so, so basically, just could be any one of the person people walking in and out of the building. <laughs> but do you have a? I mean, you can recognize them. Don't 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 discount yourself. Okay. You know, like you saw a picture of them, and you, you definitely from like twenty feet away, we can, and I can have you do a roll. So yeah, I guess I guess like you know, park the car a good way away, so it's, you know, sound immediately obvious. And you know, my you know, crappy car, like you know, what is it doing here? Give me a perception and an alertness roll. Difficulty six. Oh. <laughs> what did you get? I <laughs> oh wow! Wait, no, you did, you didn't botch because it's difficulty six, but you got you didn't pass. You didn't get <sighs> So you're sitting out there, you're waiting the whole night. All right. Oh, you're waiting for the next day, right, Ophelia, to go to talk to the tribunal with William? I was going to do some uh, research in the meantime. Okay, the... well, let's do, uh, let's do an intelligence and a cult difficulty nine. Holy shit. <laughs> Two successes, man. That's right. So you're doing some hardcore research throughout the night using a different uh, reference material online that you know from school, from doing your studies. And you kind of see that there are some very slight references to like, uh, Lilith being used in feminism and feminist empowerment, but not, uh, as such as you would, you know, think like we said, the little fair and all that jazz, but more so yeah. in kind of a secretive nature with strength through suffering. You're trying to figure out, like, strength through suffering, like, what, what exactly does that mean? But you're kind of getting the impression that maybe they mean, like, self-mutilation or, or, or torture of some sort. But sure. you're, you're not sure because there's not, honestly, a lot out there about the subject, you know? Okay. I also want to go the avenue of, if I've got the pamphlet with me, mm-hmm. I want to do, like, a bracket, you know, like a quotation mark search of certain passages into Google. And I also want to check, like, Craigslist mm-hmm. and uh, classifieds for... Any mention of Lilith? You could you check and really you don't find that quote anywhere online, and nothing really on Craigslist or anything to that extent. Okay, I cool. apologize, sir, but very good roll, man, because you wouldn't even found out about the whole you know strength through. I'm uh, pretty good suffering. at googling, you know. I, <laughs> I want to give Jonathan Chase a call on my cell phone. All right, we'll do the phone call, then we'll cut to you, Jonathan Chase. Jonathan Chase, phone's ringing. I'll answer it. Hey, uh, Jonathan, um, I don't, I want to, I wanted to ask you something about the, uh, the deep web. The deep web? Do you know much about it? Do you think it'd be a good place to look up information? Cause I'm not turning up a hell of a lot. Jonathan is familiar with the idea of the deep web. You're familiar with the Jonathan. You never really, you know what I mean? Delved into it, but you know the premise of it, you know? Can I can I make a uh, intelligence and computer roll to see how familiar I am? Yeah, go ahead. That would be six dice. Yeah, difficulty. Oh. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll do difficulty seven. Okay. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll I'll exhaust. No, I'm not. I'm not going to use willpower. Oh, God. Eh, maybe you should have, man. No successes, man. No successes. Dang. That that's uh something I would have to do further research on. 
<laughs> All right, Jonathan, you get a phone call, another phone call about 30 minutes later. I get another phone call? Mm-hmm. All right, from whom? Leo. All right, I'll answer it. Hey, uh, so due to the business that you're bringing in the potential future business, I got a feeling you're going to be bringing my way. I was able to pull some strings. I can get to you tomorrow. That would be fantastic. Can you meet me in the morning? Uh, no, I cannot. I have prior engagements in the morning. I can meet you approximately 8 p.m.? Yeah, same spot. Yes. All right. I'll see you then. All, All right. right. All right. He hangs up. Now, well, that that already dealt with one of the things I intended on, on dealing with. So oh. I will go ahead and gather together the $10,000 cash okay. for, for Leo. All right. And I would like to... um. I am going to do some um, investigative work on Coburn Trust and New Horizon Capital. Oh, fun. All right. Cool, cool. All right. Let's have – what kind of investigation, though, before we, we start talking shop are you trying to do? Okay. I What I want to do Hello. is I'm going to drive by those – well, I want to look and find out what their business hours are. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, before we continue, I just want to say something, too. With you not having any dots in finance, we can't go the financial route, but what you're going, like hours and all that stuff, we can do, okay? Yeah. All right, cool, tracking. All right, so uh, you want to try to find the hours of both companies? Yeah, I want to, the, of the business office hours, the office hours okay. for, for those businesses. And um, I want to find out if they have like, if they're, if they're open 24 hours, if they're not open 24 hours, if they're not open 24 hours, do they have people that are still working there in the evening time, either security or personnel wise? Yeah. Tracking. I'm going to have you roll an investigation and intelligence difficulty six twice. Hey, Slavic, I want you, I forgot I was going to have you do another role. I need you to roll, uh, perception and, uh, finance difficulty, uh, seven when you get back. All right. So we're going to do you here. All right. So you got, got two, two successes. successes. So for the first company for Colburn Trust, you're able to find out that their Minneapolis location hours are from, uh, six in the morning till four in the afternoon, but they have 24 seven security. That is Manning. Okay. Perception finance? Yep, difficulty seven. Uh, six, 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 five, six, seven, eight, six, <laughs> six, 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 six. You notice that Analytical Medical Solutions has been working with a company called Dunstern Ergonic Consultants. Dunstern. Yeah, D-U-N-S-T-I-R-N, Ergonic, E-R-G-O-N-I-C, Consultants. Okay. And Colburn Trust Company. And that first name should sound very familiar to you because that's who you worked with to do that hostile takeover, help your help involved. You were just a piece in it of the uh, hostile takeover of Madrid Imports from Montreal. So that should stick out to you right there. All right. And the other role. Bang, three. So you notice that has very similar hours, but uh, it's 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. and 24-7 security on there, too. When I say security, I mean the security guy who sits at a desk. Uh, all of the doors are locked, not like, you know, black sunglasses at night, dark suit security. Right. Now, who are the security companies for both of these? They're all uh, security that's hired by the companies themselves. No, right. I, no, no outside contracting. Just no outside contract contracting? Okay. Yeah. And where is the location in New Horizon Capital? They're both in Minneapolis, uh, within the business sector, which is like a 10 mile area along the Mississippi River there. All right. I am going to do some, um, war driving and just see if they have wireless connections available by either of those companies. All right. Give me a perception and, uh, computer difficulty seven. Okay, and I'm going to spend a willpower point on this, so that's going to be six dice. Does everybody know what war driving is? Nope. nope. Okay, basically, I'm driving by my vehicle with a computer, and I'm seeing if they have active wireless network connections. Ah. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you are you got six successes. So you wouldn't have noticed it with just one success because they hid their SSID but you were able to use a, a program on your laptop to uncover 
the SSIDs of each, but they are, of course, protected wireless uh, to where you just can't get in without proper credentials. But you were able to identify them even though they had hidden SSIDs. And for those of you who are listening, this is what happened. Basically, what we're driving is you drive around with a laptop, you see if there's wireless networks, right? How the Colburn Trust Company and New Horizons Capital Management have their wireless set up, they hide their SSID, which basically means when you turn on wireless on your phone or your laptop, you wouldn't see it available. That They have it hidden. So you got to know the name of it to do a search. You know, you'd have to put in whatever yeah. Colburn Trust Company wireless or whatever. He was able to find it because he had adequate software on his laptop to find it there, but he can't get into it because it requires a password. Sure. Which Which could still be hacked. Yeah, which could still be hacked, yeah, but... But we're not going that far. Right now, I'm just gathering information. I'm not actually trying to get in anywhere because that would... And if I failed or if I was too um, invasive yeah. with it, they would go, hey, we're getting hit by something. But what I'm doing right now is just a passive kind of attack. All right, you guys, I think, have spent pretty much a good part of your evening <sighs> doing all this. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts, or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called Weight Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong, and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there.